Good afternoon. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea, live Lauderdale by the Sea Pier Cam right now. Got a little bit of weather, it's been raining here, but man, that cool weather starting to come in, which is pretty nice. Didn't do the coin flip yet. Gonna do a flip instead of a spin. And of course I drop it on the ground. <laughs> That's how my day has been going. Sorry about the late report today. Uh, how do you get a dead battery uh, flat tire, you name it. Every, I hit every bridge, drawbridge that I could, uh, trying to get back here this morning. So again, sorry about the lateness of this video again. Uh, let's do a quick flip here, see if I can hold on to it this time. And what's the coin saying today? Gosh, a bull. It says a bull every time. This coin loves bulls. Well, let's move into today's market. And after looking at the uh, spot prices, I'm kind of glad I waited a little bit. Uh, there's a uh, look at the uh, metals prices. I I suspected I was I was suspecting on Monday we were going to see a smackdown in silver, uh, <clears throat> about a dollar or so, is what I was suspecting. And really, I got a base set on uh, read you know being a new subscriber to Ted Butler's reports. Uh, he said the uh, short positions, the uh, banks, uh, uh, the commercial bank short positions had increased their posi you know increased the shorts uh, quite a bit actually. And uh, he, you know, he suspected that we would see down prices, and it sounds like it made sense to me. I kind of repeated the same thing, and and we didn't see it yesterday. However, uh, I think we're starting to see that monkey hammering down a dollar. Like I mentioned in yesterday's video, Ted mentioned this is just temporary, and uh, that we're looking for some exciting things to come up. And uh, the chart guy that uh, was making comments <laughs> seems like he knows what he's uh, uh, talking about as well when it comes to charts. Um, made a similar uh, statement that he felt that uh, we'd see silver in this range that we have, and we'd see another you know, uh, smack down about a buck and then we'd run back up to 2750. I hope he's right. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Excuse me, let me clear my throat here. Get a little sip of coffee. Sorry about that. I've been rushing on everything I've been doing today. Try to get stuff done here. <clears throat> Running late on just about everything. Uh, let's take a look at the gold prices here. Overnight, 1787. Gold really is in that same. It's for all intents and purposes. It's sitting right at around 1800. 1800 seems to be a psychological level. Uh, but the, <clears throat> we got psychological levels everywhere. 1700, 1800, 19. You know what I mean? That those are psychological levels. So it's right around that psychological level, 1800. Looks like it backed off to 17.8, but you know, 13 bucks off from 1800. It's right there. Gold hasn't. It's, it's been steady in this plus, you know, 17.50 to 17, 1800 range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Pretty consistent. Uh, so let's take a look at the silver prices too. 23.42. Uh, currently 24.09. So silver really took the big smackdown. Almost a 64 cent, almost a dollar smackdown. Let's see if that kind of continues in tomorrow. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, as I've been pointing out, what time did it happen? Hmm, happened in the morning. Comex again. Uh, same thing with gold. A little bit of smackdown. We saw that. Uh, platinum still hanging on to that uh, above thousand dollar mark. Looks like the range was 10.39 to 10.66. Uh, so platinum's kind of hanging on to uh, you know the gains that it made. It was sitting below that thousand dollar mark for quite some time, and uh, I don't think we're going to see that in. Well, you never know. I don't think we'll see it for long again. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, gold price chart today and uh, see the <clears throat> the correlation here of what we got going on with. Uh, God, I got a frog in my throat. Pardon me. Let me just take another drink here. Um, actually, I think I need something stronger than coffee today. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the 24-hour uh, spot bid and see exactly when uh, this smackdown happened or whatever we're looking at. Here it is right here in gold. Not much, really, if you're you looking at it. It's kind of staying steady. Gold is staying steady for quite some time in the 1750 to 1800 range, primarily in the 1770 <coughs> damn, uh, to 1800 range. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what do we got going on here. Again, kind of sideways. There's New York opening NYMEX right there, uh, 8:20 a.m. Uh, in fact, gold up a little bit and kind of you know a little up and down roller coaster action going there. Minor, really though. The big smackdown occurred with silver. Take a look at the silver line and what time did it happen and basically where. It looks like uh, possibly London started to slide before New York opened. But look at this. Again, these vertical lines up and down uh, are uh, seem to be happening consistently. Uh, between uh, uh, 8 in the morning, New York opening, and uh, noontime. This one kind of extended almost to exactly noontime. Take a look at that. We're up a little bit. S seems to be steadying off to, to what it seems. And look at that. Look at that line from yesterday, too. Uh, moving up 2380 to the 24 mark. What time? 820. All kinds of weird action. Just take a look at the 24-hour charts. You can go back 
maybe a month or more even and, and see that the uh, most of the action in precious metals, gold and silver has been incurring in New York in the morning. Uh, by whom? You got me, I don't know. I suspect it's probably by the uh, short positions, the big, you know, the, the big players out there, the big whales. So uh, let's take a look at something else here that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, U.S. Gold, uh, no, November letter, gold has tracked the misery index. And it's kind of funky that they brought this up because we were talking about this in one of our videos. I brought up the misery index, um, what, it was about a month ago or so in one of the videos I did, the daily videos. And we kind of were comparing the, uh, 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 we were comparing the misery index with the price of gold. And give me one second here. I've got the misery index. I actually just subscribed to this. I've got a free subscription for seven days. I wanted to see the uh, the uh, entire chart, the maximum chart that goes back to the 1960s for the uh, misery index, and uh, compare it to the gold prices. That's kind of what they're mentioning here on GATA.org. And lo and behold, I didn't have access to this particular chart before, but it's basically take a look at it. There is uh, your first big bull market right there, and let's take a look. There it is, right there. Uh, February in 1975 is when you've seen silver. Uh, what is it? The price of silver. This has got to be uh, adjusted. Give me one second. Misery index and gold. Uh, <clears throat> my, my apology. I think it's gold as well. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, when it hit. All right. What does that 19 mark actually mean? Uh, 16. I don't think that's the price of silver, is it? Level chart. Again, let me take a look. View full chart. Interactive chart. Oh, that's pretty cool. 1960s. All right, well, let's just look at this chart, okay? There's your first bull run in gold and silver, probably mostly gold. Uh, and there is, uh, oh, right there, 1975. This is ac after Nixon uh, uh, took us off the gold standard officially here. Sorry for that. I kind of had to stop and think about what I was looking at here. But there is uh, uh, your first bull markets right there when uh, uh, Nixon took us off the gold standard. I think that was about 19, yeah, 1975. And there's the 1980 gold and silver market. And as you see, the misery index starts to fall here and uh, go down. And, and what's our next big market here would be 2012. Take a look at the misery index in 2011, 2012. You can see that does coincide with a higher price in gold. But of course, and then here we are again, 2020. So there's your peaks over the last uh, 40 years uh, or more, actually, over the last uh, yeah 40 years plus. There's your peaks uh, that, that happen to coincide, the misery index, uh, and that's the misery index, 18.8. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I was trying to, it, it threw me off a little bit, and that's not the price of silver back then, but that's actually the uh, misery index number right there. And if you look at the dates, they absolutely do coincide with uh, uh, um, price of uh, precious metals kind of going up, or our bull markets and precious metals. And the lows seem to coincide with the uh, lows in the, uh, the precious metals market as well. I suspect, I suspect, and the reason I started talking about this, that we're going to see this misery index start to rise substantially, uh, especially under this uh, new administration and the economic woes and the political woes that are happening. Uh, yeah, we can definitely expect that. So, uh, got a lot of good things going for gold and silver, including the misery index. Let's. Uh, I thought this was interesting. Why I wanted to show it to you. I think that you can view. Uh, some of these charts for free, but they do charge to uh, look at. They charge to look at their stuff. Um, <laughs> the new world, charging for everything. Uh, however, macro trend charts are free as well, and uh, we like to look at charts and compare precious metals. And let's look at gold prices versus oil prices as well. And what is this? Let's look at all years. Hit all years right there. Similar chart. Take a look at the peak here. 1980s. There's your 80 gold and silver gold market. Oil up too. It's funny, oil and misery and gold and silver go hand in hand. Oh, what a great combination, misery, gold, oil, and silver. But, but you know, look at the graphs. They really do kind of go hand in hand pretty much. Uh, there's where our oil shot up dramatically, and that was, uh, what, 2008, right before the crisis. But shortly thereafter, gold and silver shoot up dramatically too. Uh, kind of interesting that these graphs, uh, gold and silver, you know, there's a correlation between uh, uh, gold prices, oil prices. There's a correlation between the misery index and the price of gold. Uh, gold price and U.S. dollar correlation, which seems to be inverse. Take a look at that. When one does well, the other one does not do well. Uh, so there's a lot, there's a lot of graphs and data and evidence here to point to that we are headed for. Um, I won't say parabolic gold, but we are headed to uh, a tremendous uh, uh, increase, a tremendous. Uh, bull market in uh, precious metals. 
you know, typically these markets are stretched out over long periods of time. I believe gold and silver, you know, the current bull market that we're in, and a lot, again, a lot of folks, especially younger folks and people that are used to the meme stocks and used to, uh, uh, you know, the Wall Street's uh, uh, meme stocks and stuff, uh, or, or, or cryptos, you know, they don't understand long-term bull markets. If it doesn't happen quickly, then it really is not happening to them. But, you know, those are not predictable markets, really, you know, especially with cryptos. It's like, to me, it's like a casino. Uh, but I digress. We're talking about charts. Uh, Dow to gold ratio. This is kind of an interesting chart. I don't even think I looked at this. Uh, and again, these are all charts that you can, oh, the ratio, I'm sorry. That's not a comparative chart between the two. Um, let's not look at that. That takes some brain power to do the math here. Uh, speaking of ratios, uh, with the current prices that we're at right now, gold ratios are up quite, I mean, the gold to silver ratio is up quite a bit right now. It was up, it was around 74 to 1 when gold was, you know, when silver is above that $24 level. Now that we're in that sub 24, I just did the math, 76.33 uh, um, uh, gold to silver ratio right now. Currently, just the last few minutes, you know, in the last few minutes. <clears throat> Let's see how long it stays at that ratio or if it starts to tighten up again. Uh, what else kind of charts you get on here that are really cool? Gold to silver ratio. Oh, there it is right there. There's our gold to silver ratio we were just talking about. And for the last, if I look at the 30 year chart, I like to kind of draw an average line between like that 65 to one in the last 30 years. That seems to be about the average and uh, we're sitting up in this higher level. Uh, take. Well, what is that right there? That was uh, November 2008, 79 to 1. Uh, this is uh, 2020, uh, whereas 98 to 9, uh, okay, almost 100. What was it? 120 to 1, actually, intraday trading, uh, the gold and silver ratio. And uh, I believe that this chart right here uh, could be heading uh, back up again. The ratios could be spreading out. Will gold make the big first move and then silver follow again? I don't know. That's what happened in 2020. Gold make the big, made the big giant move and silver, silver kind of followed up. This is why I'm always telling people that invest in silver, the silver apes, the silver stackers out there, you have to follow gold. Gold, silver does follow gold. I mean, at some point, you know, when this manipulation by uh, uh, the, the, the big four, the big eight um, uh, commercial banks out there, when this uh, manipulation ends or, or uh, uh, collapses on them badly, um, or whatever position, you know, whatever happens, when it ends, uh, you could see silver uh, jump up dramatically uh, compared to what gold might do. However, I think gold prices are cheap right now. I think gold is going to continue its upwards trend, and uh, that is naturally going to take the price of silver up with it, without a doubt. And I think that the issue that they're going to have, these uh, short positions in the silver market, is is silver is going to be following gold. At some point, it's going to be following. So they're, so they're going to get hurt with those positions even worse. Um, well, again, they offset this stuff. I'm not quite sure how it plays out, but I'm learning. Let's take a look at what articles we got out here. Bitcoin seems to be jumping all over the place. You know, uh, one of the, you know, I did a video uh, yesterday about the CME being crooked and comics being crooked. You know, the CME is involved with Bitcoin right now. Uh, <laughs> so I wouldn't have comics. And, you know, who does comics favor? Comics favor when it comes to silver in the silver in the silver pit, so to say, in comics, the, the, the big short positions are favored by comics. Uh, Comex allows them to get away with uh, a bet, making these huge bets at the detriment to silver miners, at the detriment to silver investors, at the de detriment to everybody else except the short positions that do it simply to make money. They don't do it because they hate silver, folks. And Comex allows it uh, because uh, uh, the CME group makes a fortune off these guys doing these trades. So they almost probably encourage it and they allow them to manipulate the price of silver. Um, it, it, again, they, they allow this behavior, the CME. This is why I'm, I'm very, uh, been very adamant that the only way we're going to get changes really is if uh, uh, we bring publicity to the fact that uh, they, they do this type of manipulation and uh, we start lobbying somehow, some way. Uh, that's the only reason it's going to change, unless it blows up in their faces. And as I was just saying, how might it blow up in their faces? Again, price of gold goes up dramatically. You're going to see the price of uh, 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 silver get pulled up with it. Uh, as far as cryptos go, everyone you know, talking about the CME being involved and COMEX uh, is involved with uh, uh, cryptocurrency. In fact, a lot of the people that are very, you know, the very, uh, the crypto, what am I going to say, the, the guys that just love this stuff and uh, can't see anything wrong with it at all. Um, the, the opposite of the haters, <laughs> the guys that, you know, again, just nothing but positive things about crypto. 
uh, and they they were bragging about what a you know that crypto is going mainstream. They were bragging about how good it was that cryptocurrencies uh, uh, were going to be on the Comex or CME was going to get involved with it, and regulators were going to get involved with. It. Trust me, folks. If you have paid any attention, this is my crypto people out there. If you paid any attention to the silver markets, this is absolutely untrue. Uh, and what reminded me of this is uh, this this uh, reply on a Twitter reply. Uh, since June, July sell-off, whales, which are billionaires and large corporations, that the COMEX and the CME will obviously favor uh, over you or the small guys. Again, you guys are going to be the bag holders on, on this. Uh, a lot of people holding uh, cryptos, the small guy will be in, in the long run. Uh, has returned to uh, Since the whales has returned to accumulation and currently in a multi-month accumulation uptrend, moreover, their supply is much less than it has been uh, April ATH, which might indicate accumulation period or generally depleting supplies held by whales. This term right here needs to scare you, whales, and I tell you why, because most of us are not whales. Most of us are small fish in the, uh, the big ocean, and uh, we get eaten by whales, so you have to know that game. Uh, if you're in crypto markets and you don't understand that you're playing against whales, and these whales have an extreme advantage over you, uh, again, not unlike the silver market and what's going on with COMEX and them favoring the, uh, these big short positions that fraudulently, in my opinion, manipulate these markets. Uh, the same thing's happening in the crypto markets, folks. So, and, and the problem with crypto is that the nice thing about silver and gold is you can say, screw it, I'm not going to play their game like the uh, Wall Street silver folks have done. You can, I'm not going to play their game. Give me my frickin' silver. I'm going to hold my silver. But what are you going to hold with cryptocurrency? Nothing. It's not tangible. There's nothing there. It's completely easy to manipulate, extremely volatile. Uh, and at some point, if the big whales just decided to exit it, guess who's going to be holding the bag? Again, I, I don't like cryptos really as far as uh, it's not money, period. It's not money. I view it as a very volatile um, financial uh, instrument, a very volatile financial instrument or a very volatile, like a casino. I don't know how you combine a financial instrument and a casino together, but uh, that's what I view cryptocurrencies as. And again, knowing that the big whales are out there and uh, they're going to they're gonna eat the small fish, why would you want to be in that market? You can't even own it. Uh, I digress. <laughs> uh, God, I keep flipping that same freaking thing. Uh, sorry. Conclusions. The ratio between the two groups, whales and other fishes, gives a measurement of supply dynamics. Thus can help visualize the supply shortage of coins held by whales can cause its effect on price. And again, these big price moves, these big movements you see in cryptos, these are billionaires having fun with your money, okay? And eventually they're going to figure out how to get that money because that's what they do best. Uh, and you think that the CME, CFTC, or who's ever regulating that is going to be any help to you at all? No. You know, my opinion, crypto, that's a giant casino market. It is not a real, uh, um, you know, it's real market. Can't talk, say it's not a real market, but it's, to me it's a big casino. And, uh, and what can you hold? If you want to say, I want to pull out of Ethereum, I want to hold something. You can't hold Ethereum. You can't hold uh, Bitcoin. It's virtual. It's, I don't even know what virtual means. Virtual means... It's fake. It's not fake. It exists somehow. It exists in your mind, I guess. Uh, I'd rather have something that, that exists and I can hold it in my hand like gold and silver. Uh, again, about wealth preservation. If you like casinos and you like this, you know, if you got money to play with these whales, uh, go out there. And again, there's a lot of you out there that have made money on cryptos. Uh, you know how the, that game is rigged. You know how the game is played. And if that's the case, you know how the game is rigged. You know how the game, just like we do with silver and gold, and you know how the game is rigged in, uh, in, in, in Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and these crypto markets, then by all means, play it, folks, if you can make money. I am a capitalist. I'm not, a, I'm not against Bitcoin as far as outlawing it or doesn't, don't think it exists, but I, I view it for what it really is. It's, well, what is it? It's digital nothingness. All right, I'm sorry. I'm being pretty cruel about it right now, so... I don't want to do that. Uh, Wall Street Silver, uh, I like this site. I always talk about it. I'm not going to go into my uh, rant about the uh, political discussions and the political power that I think the Wall Street Silver really has because of its memberships. So Let's kind of look at some of the fun things they put out here. Um, I had to stop this. Uh, the memes are great out there, but they got to kind of they got to get their hit, you know they got to get their facts straight here. And then this JPM dude said, "Let's slam the silver price a bit more." And then these retarded apes will start buying. I got to tell you to the gentleman that wrote this meme that the JP Morgan has not been the short position since uh, probably Wall Street Silver was created. They've been out of this short position in a long time. In fact, they are in the same position as you, Mr. Stecker. They are in a physical long position with gold and silver right now. 
So they are definitely not slamming the price per se. Now, could they be encouraging it because they're making money off the short positions or the money managers or, or whatever? Yeah, they could be. They're probably loaning out their gold, leasing their gold and silver that they made from this whole deal. But J.P. Morgan is not the slammer right now. They haven't been the slammer in a while as far as we know. Um, <clears throat> exactly which big commercial bank it is, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Silver, the new Silver Eagles, I got to tell you, uh, just I'm just looking at the I, I, I can't stand it. Where, where do they get these freaking designs? By the way, I got my new uh, O Mint and CC dollars. You know the Morgan dollars. Um, I think the Hamilton Mint could have done a better job, or uh, Silvertown could have be done a better job than making these things. They look amateurish. The Morgan dollar is amateurish. I'm sorry, it just looks terrible. You know, I like it. I think it's cool, but man, uh, I don't know who the designers are uh, at, at the Mint now, but they suck. Uh, and the new Silver Eagle design to me just sucks. Uh, I don't know. That's just my opinion. They, it, it's like they take old stuff and they, they redesign it and they screw it up even worse. <laughs> so it's like going backwards with the U.S. Mint designs, it seems. Uh, nothing new or innovative. Uh, but let me move along to some other things. I gave you my opinion on that. Um, hyperinflation. Uh, oh, I didn't see that video. And let's see what else we got here. Who made that one? Uh, one troy ounce AG international trade. Oh, the international trade round. God, those things. I, I wonder if that's like the old international trade units. If so, those things are made in the 1980s, some of them. And uh, he's got some silver there. Unintended consequences. Just kind of going over some things. My coin collection as filthy casual. I don't know what that is. Sorry about that. silver coins. Uh, I believe that's the Athenian owl. Is there? No, that's just, uh, okay. That's a fairly common coin. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to get out of WSS because I guess I could just keep scrolling down and talking about anything. You know me. And uh, not too much to discuss. I'd like to thank all the folks here that watched the video yesterday. And uh, with Eagles selling for such a premium, what can I expect to get them if I sell? Currently, Silver Eagles I just sold the few boxes that I had. I only had a couple boxes. I, I haven't liked them. I don't advise my customers to buy them. They've been overpriced, in my opinion, for the longest time now. But I wholesaled out my Silver Eagles. I, just, I guess I shouldn't say this to Atmex. I sold them for six bucks, and they're probably getting plus 10 for them. I just wasn't comfortable. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't Atmex. I, I'm sorry. I sent them some uh, something else, some 90%. Uh, but 90% in the U.S. Silver Eagles, the premiums are just stupid. I wholesaled out all my 90% in Silver Eagles because I refuse to sell them to my customers. And, uh, and there's some people that just insist on them. I mean, I keep some around here, but man, Silver Eagles are just way overpriced. They were overpriced at $6 that I sold them wholesale for. Uh, they're certainly going to be overpriced online at 8 to 10 So I think if you sold your Silver Eagles right now, you could probably get five or six bucks as a retail person over D-Man. And if you can get five or six bucks over spot, you could probably go back and buy some uh, generic silver and stuff for less than $4 an ounce. So you can put $2 an ounce in your pocket right now. With, I'm pretty sure one to $2 an ounce uh, in your pocket or you know, an ex some extra silver in your pocket um, by doing that trade right now. So yeah, I would trade out of Silver Eagles in 90% right now if you could find a, uh, a replacement product that you could put more ounces back in your product. And there's still some out there. Uh, thanks for watching Silver Lou and Tim Gibbs, uh, Gibson. And uh, some guy made a video where he showed his receipt for $28 Eagles. Uh, it won't be any time soon that you're going to see $28 Eagles. Again, I just blew off mine at 6 I bet you that the online resellers are probably 8 to 10 over. I'd still beat that price, but I hate to sell them to you, even if I had them for 6 bucks over. It's still overpriced. Uh, Don Robinson says, I expect gold to fall in London. London banks need physical gold to replace unallocated, uh, non-existing gold with physical gold. Yeah, that's a whole different market, Don. I agree with you. Um, the, the market between gold and silver is uh, all di whole, whole different players. I don't think it's the same players. I could be wrong. Uh, thanks for watching, Don. I appreciate it and commenting. And uh, look, oh, the weather looks about the same today as well. No surf, though, man. I'd like to get some waves coming in. I need, 
I need the tranquility of getting some nice cool waves. <laughs> well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. I advertise to be at MaxJM and SD Bullion. Uh, I can beat their prices pretty easy, and I can give you good personal advice, which is hard for them to do. Not only that, you keep your money local. If you don't live near me, I recommend you find a good local dealer. Keep that money local, folks. It's real important, especially in these times. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.